Hi everyone, welcome to Guinea Technologies. So today's session is all about the static routing. So we will understand everything about the static routing along with the theoretical part, configuration, and how we can make the reachability, right? So let's discuss about the static routing, right? How it is going to be happen. So first thing we just have to understand the history about the all static routing why you use, right? So if I talk about the theoretical path, they are talking about the static routing is type of network routing technique where the network administrators manually configure the network routes in the routing table rather than relying on the dynamic routing protocols, automatically determining the best path for the each data packets. Static routing is the commonly used in small and medium sized network with a few routers and the small number of network manage, right? So you can see like it's clearly explaining about why we need the static route and where we can use the static route. So one thing we understand, we having a two type of the routing. One is a static routing and we having another the dynamic routing. So in upcoming session, we'll understand everything about the routing, right? So if I talk about the routing, first we have to understand what is the routing and which layer it's work. So routing is nothing, it's work in the layer three that we call the network layer. So in the network layer, routing works and what they do, they carry the IP packets, right? So what is IP packets? We have the source IP address, we having the destination IP address. It could be like 192, 160, 10.10, any IP address and destination could be any IP address. And then, this IP information should be carried from one location to another location. So let's say one of the example here, one PC is connected, this PC and another PC is also here connected and they want to talk. This PC1, PC1 want to talk with the PC2, then how they are going to talk. So the technology behind to talk this PC is routers. Without routers, we cannot talk to these two PCs. So your packet will reach from here to the routers and then router is responsible to carry the layer three information. So we having a layer one, we having a layer two, we having a layer three, we having a layer four, layer seven, what generally we use. So layer one is just the physical connections. Layer two understand only the VLANs, that is a MAC address. Layer three understand the IP address. Layer four understand about the uh, ports, whatever the ports, number UDP, TCP. Layer seven understand about the applications. So these layer four, layer seven, we are not going to talk. Layer two, we are not going to talk. We are just talking about the layer three, which is responsible to carry the IP information. So this IP information can be carried by using the routing. So routing is basically just to exchange the packet from one source to another destination that is called the routing. And this could be the static routing. This could be the dynamic routing. So where we are talking about the static routing, so static routing is something where we can configure everything manually. It is not something dynamical, right? So the real examples, let's just suppose you start a travels. So you start a travel, might be you are staying somewhere in the India country. Let's take example in that New Delhi. So you are staying in New Delhi and you want to go any airport. So might be the airport, Delhi airport. That is the AGI, uh, IGI, right? Indira Gandhi International Airport, so IGI Airport, and you start traveling somewhere in the Delhi, might be from the railway station, right? So if you start traveling from the railway stations and you want to go on the IGI, so you don't know the way, how can I go to the railway station, right? So you just exit from the railway platform, right? You need to ask someone, hey, can you just tell me how can I reach to the AG airport? Then he told, okay, you just go straight and just ask someone else. Okay. So you just go straight, you find one of the roundabout, and then again, we're having the four way to go there. So again, you ask the person who is standing here, hey, can you just tell me how to go to the IGA uh, airport? Then he's okay, just go straight and you'll find another roundabout. And then again, ask. Again, there is a four way to go. So every hope you are reaching and then asking, how can I go? Right. So based on that, you are just relying for the every intermediate device, which are might be the router or the L3 switch. And then your packet is just reaching from one router to another router, again, checking the information, again, going to forward, again, going to forward, and then finally you reach to the destination. So you can see we having a lot of complexity here to reach the destination. But if you run the dynamic routing protocols, anything like by OSPF, 
So you already know the path. How can I reach with the destination? You don't need to ask anyone. Like with the GPS, right? GPS. So once we open the GPS map, what is going to happen? Every path is going to show in how many paths are available, which is having the congested, which is the fastest path, which is the longest path. Everything you know about the GPS map. Similarly, in the dynamic routing table, everything you know about the your routing information, right? So static is like everything you just have to do manually. You just have to go with the manual way, one hope, another hope. Then finally, you reach your destination. So that's why they are talking about the small network. It's possible if you're having the small network. Let me just write here. If you're having the small network, that is a completely possible. You're having the mid range of the network. I can say a little bit uh, bigger than the small. Then you can use the static routing. That is the quite possible. There is no issue with the using the static routing. So static routing can be used here also. But whenever talk with a large network, it is not possible. So that's why the document itself is talking about why we need the static routing and where it can be used. So configuration, you can say the manually configuration routing table is again between manually routing table database. Matrix is going to be one. So a static route always matrix is AD value we can call not matrix. So we call the administrative distance. That is one of the any uh, static route connected route, which is uh, connected to the interface. That is a zero. So you just have to remember the AD value, right? So we are having different different things, failover and troubleshooting. We are not going to touch everything, but there is some sample configuration about the how the interface can be configured. I'm going to show you how the routing is can be defined, and the st static routing can be defined. What command we can run? So I'm going to showcase in front of you right away. But <clears throat> what what is the idea about the static routing? So the see the concept of the static routing date back or the early days of the con computer networking when the router was the first introduced. So initially when the router was introduced. That time only one routing protocol was there. That is a static routing protocol. Initially, the network were relatively small and simple. So no need to worry about that initial days when the router was invented. But when the enterprise networks are growing day by day, day by day. So after that, we just have to rely on the dynamic routing protocols. And it was very difficult to manage with the static routing table. So then the dynamic routing protocol was developed in the 1980. That was a RIP. So that was a dynamic routing portal. Then further, we having the PGP, AGR, POS, we have a lot of routing protocol, IS, IS. And now we are talking about the SD band. So a lot of information available right away. But initially, it was the manual thing, everything. Okay. So let's understand about the static routing, how it is going to happen. So let's suppose you're having a three routers and you want to make the reachability from this loop back to this loop back. Then how it is going to happen? How the manual routing protocol is going to be configured? So probably you just have to open the router. First, we have to configure the two things. One is the interface and then the loopback address. So loopback is nothing. It's a virtual IP address, which is going to assign on the virtual interface. That is a loopback. So we'll just create and understand how it is going to be created. So just allow me a time. Maybe I'm going fast. <laughs> this is just you know, a session I want to demonstrate. So a little bit I'm going fast, but no worry. You just have to digest host name R1. And if I'm going in the interface, Ethernet 0 by 0. So I just have to assign the IP address. How can I assign that 172.16.10.1 to 55 to 55.0 and no shit. This is what I assign the IP address. Similarly, I just have to assign the IP address and loopback interface. So interface loopback. I can just uh let me just come out from the interface, interface loop back, and I'll write one and then IP address 1.1.1. So see, this is one my network, sorry, not slash 32. Sorry for that. I keep using this in the SD1 scenario. So I'm just using, uh, so this is what to so do, right? So I just can do the configuration on this R1, right? Similar to the R2, what I'll do the configuration. It's a very quick, just have to assign the two interfaces. And we'll make the interface configuration, then we'll do the routing, how it is going to be happen, right? So let's understand how it is going to happen. So this is what uh, the first name, I'll change the host name, that is the archo, and then interface ethernet zero by zero, IP address, that is 172.16.10.2, 255, 255, 255.0, and no shut. The first thing I will do, I will try to ping the neighbor IP address, which I configured. It is reachable or not. First thing. 
So it should be reachable because we make the interface noted and configured. See, I'm able to ping. So one interface configuration done, I will do for the Ethernet zero by one. So what I'll do, I'll just go there and I will use IP address 192.168.10.2, 255, 255, 255, and zero and no shut. And then we are good with this router configuration. No need to ping because this side not configured. So once we configure this, then I'll ping from here to this IP address, okay? So I'll go on the R3 again. And after going in the R3, what I'll do, I'll, I will just do the configuration. So let me do that. How can I do? Just learn it, okay? So once router will be ready, and we are in the configuration mode and just first change the host name. So host name will be the R3 and I will go in the interface Ethernet zero by one and I will just use IP address 192.168.10.1, 255, 255, 255.0 and no shirt, no shirt. And I will try to do ping 196.2 should be reachable. That is the IP address. So see, this is reachable. So next thing I'll make the loopback interface, this one. Here, so loop back three, and I will just assign IP address 3.3.3.3, .3 .3 .3. 255, 255, 255, 255, 255, no set, and do write, we are done. So see, what is the lab task in this? So the lab task, we just have to make the reachability between these two networks. One is a loopback three, and one is a loopback one. So how we can make that is the our static routing table. So see, if I'm trying to ping this network from here, is it not going to ping? See, not working. So R3 not able to reach R1, okay? And similarly, if I am going on R1, am I trying to ping R3? Let me show you. 3.3.3.3, it is not pinging. Trust me, guys. Static routing is one of the easiest way and manual configuration, but one of the hardest protocol to troubleshoot in the multiple complex scenario. It's like, it's difficult. If you're not having the forward routing and reverse routing concept, you cannot troubleshoot, okay? So let's understand the concept, how it is going to happen. So R1 need to ping R3, okay? So what is going to happen? So if I try to reach IP route, there is no routing table available for the slopeback interface. 333. Three, three. I don't know anything about this 33 three interface. So, how I can make that? So, what is the way to reach from R1 to R3? So, this is the interface from where I can reach. This is the way only to reach here. So, let's figure out the way. So, I am going to tell this R1, hey, if you want to reach on the R3, just use this routing to reach there. So, I'll go in the configuration table and I'll just write IP route. This is telling the way, path. It is describing the path. How can reach to R3? So R1, how can reach to R3? So R1 is adding the route for the R3. And what is subnet mask? This is the IP and this is a subnet mask. So if I'm going to use this subnet mask, then I have to use the next hope IP address. So what is the next hope IP address? See, in documents, whenever you define the IP address for the anything, you just have to use the next hope IP address from where I can reach. So in this case, what is the next hope IP address? Just tell me, you guys. This is the IP address 172.16.10. Because from this router point of view, you can reach from this and then you can reach from this. This is the only way, right? So I will just tell this is the next of 172, then 16, then 10.2. Okay, so we are done with this. So if I check in the so IP route, so IP route, so you'll find now I have the route in my routing table to reach to R3 loopback address but if i try to ping still i'm not able to ping you can see it's unreachable why your packet come from here and it is reached to here but this router doesn't know how to reach to this destination so you just have to tell this router also how to reach to this destination because every hope you just have to define the routing tables if i'm going here and if i'm checking the route for the r3 do you have route no i don't have any route so what we have to do again, you have to run the same command. What you have run here, the same command IP route. The only thing is going to be changed the next hope from this router point of view. What is the next hope? This is the so manual. You just defining the path. So 168.10.1. So I done on the R2, but still, let me just check with the R1. Am I able to reach? 
so still i am not able to reach wow so now the question is i define the complete path from here to here here to here but why i am not able to ping so let's understand the very good concept guys okay so we having we have done the forward routing we just tell the one way how to reach but we are not defining when reply come then what is the path so you just have to define the forward routing and reverse routing concept okay and this is a big mistake so we done with the forward routing and what about the reverse routing reverse routing so what that means the forward routing and reverse routing so see whenever the packet is going to build you just having the source ip address and here in the source ip address what is the source ip address what is the destination ip address the source ip address is let me just write in this way the so source ip address you just define here 192 uh, might be 190 uh, let me just use this one 11 uh. so this is originating the packet and this is your destination ip address let's assume in this way and let me just use here source ip just for the demonstration even the source with the not able to reach okay source 1.1.1 see it is not reachable so i am using this source to this destination so the always routing happen based on the destination address so always this router will check the destination it is okay how to reach so it will forward to packet to this because we having the routing table you can see here this routing table is saying if you want to go to the uh, 333 network you just go on this router so packet reach here now again this router will check how to reach this 3 network so again it will check the routing table so let me just show you so now your packet is reaching via this network so next stop is this one so now this is going to send to this router now the packet received received to the final destination so this packet finally received to this destination so let me just write it here so this packet receive and this destination so this is 1.1.1 this is source ip address and destination is 3.3.3 this is your source ip address and this is your destination ip address but when this packet will going to reply when this router is going to reply your source will be become your destination and destination will become your source so now this is become your this is become your destination ip address 1.1 become your destination ip address why because this router is trying to reach this ip address and this will become your source ip address so now your packet is reverse so do you have the one routing table available in the r3 the answer is no because let me show you so if i am going in the r3 and i try to run this particular let me write it here 3.3.3 so if i am try to run so ip route so see there is no routing for 1.1.1 so again we just have to tell the manual path so i just have to go here ip route 1.1.1 255 255 255 255 and what is the next stop this is the next stop so 192.168 10.2 so probably we just have to use as a next stop so we are done with this routing table now this r3 know how to reach this 1.1.1 so you can see here so ip route so if this is the network which is connected via this one but still if i am trying to ping it is not going to ping let me show you so if i am trying to ping r1 see still reply is not coming because your packet leave from here but when this router will receive this packet do i know this destination let me check the r2 doesn't know about destination let me show you how it is going to happen show ip route so see there is no 1.1 route 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 is available in the routing table so you just have to again tell me the path how can i reach the one network right so i just have to use this 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 and 255 255 255 255 and then next stop would be this one your 172.1 this interface ip address and then we are done now we are tell the forward so just think about this let me just ping first it's working or not so let me just try and see now it's pinging so we are able to reach from r1 to r3 this is and if you check the reverse also r3 to r1 see let me just show you ping 1.1.1 with the source 3.3.3 see it is reachable so now the both router is having the reachability let me just write the configuration so interesting guys i hope up uh, you all enjoy this i'm also enjoying with all 
Okay, so what is the concept? Let's understand. So how the packet? So this router wanted to reach this destination. So initially he don't know about anything how to reach. So it is asked the router, can you tell me the routing table how to reach? Then router add one routing table. Just go on this router, this particular roundabout. Then again, there was uh, a question to this router. Do you know this network? Then I guess, yes, I know this network. Then packet receive this because you define the static routing pointing to this interface. Here you define pointing to this interface. Once the packet received there, then it is trying to reply to this one. So your source will become destination here. So destination IP will be the 1.1.1. .1 .1. Then it is going to ask, do we have route for this one? The answer was no. So we just have to again add the route toward this particular next shop IP address. Then once this receive, receive the packet by the R2, it will check, do we have routing for this one? The answer was no. Then again, it added to the this routing table. So this is the final configuration we have done. So now if you think about the final configuration, R2. So you let me just use IP route. So this is the two route. Let me just add it here. So this is a two route. We added in. Sorry. So this is the routing table we added in the R2, right? Similar. Let me just show you the show run include IP route. Just okay. You guys can make your lab if you want to do. This is the routing table, so I can add it here. Sorry, sorry for that. Okay, so this is going to add here. So this R1 having this configuration. And if you run the R3, so you'll find another configuration this way. So it's a pretty easy to configure, but you know, the forward and reverse the forward and reverse routing should be always keep in your mind because the static routing, I, I say, this is the one of the complex routing in term of the configuration and troubleshooting. Trust my word, guys. So you can see here, this is the R3 configuration, this is the R2 configuration, and this is the R1 configuration to make this topology reachable. So I hope you enjoyed this session, guys, and I wish you all the best and happy learning. We'll see you again in the next lecture. Okay, bye-bye. Take care.